the minutes from January 9th. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Second? I make a motion to accept the January 9th, 2024 minutes as written. Okay. Then you can second. I'll second. Are there any comments or corrections or changes? In that case, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. We do not have a public to comment. Um, for the purpose of those who might choose to view this, I would simply like to mention that there will be three positions for library trustee on the annual town election in May. The deadline for taking out papers is the 29th of March and papers need to be returned on, I believe it's April 16th. So if there is anybody out there in viewer land, <laughs> and if you would like to find out more, please talk to Patrick, or there is an email that you can reach us on the library's website within the town, and we'll get back to you. Okay. Director's report. Okay. Did you want to talk about the roof in the context of the subcommittee that we're... Yes. Uh, okay, so I'll hold off on that for now. Um, uh, so the, the breaking news from the last couple of weeks is that we turned in our budget for FY25. Um, it came back to us with some minor adjustments that we were, I mean, I was perfectly happy with. I said, I can live with this, you know, we're, we're, this is um, big picture, very good. Um, it, the budget did re reflect an increase in, um, in, in, sal in staffing, uh, sheer hours for staffing. Um, and that was untouched in the, in the recommendations from the town administrator and treasurer. Um, lo, lo and behold, Wait, several weeks later, decide. they said, oops, we made a mistake. Um, and we were told that um, that was going to have to wait for the time being. And they did take a chunk out of that, uh, that budget line. However, on reflection and looking at it more carefully, what it actu actually reflects is that they have removed from the budget the additional money that we were looking for to hire an additional circulation staff person. They did not remove the money that we asked for to push Sue's current hours from 32 to 37 and a half. I'm not, I'm, not asking, I'm not going to ask any further questions about that, but as long as that's still there, um, that's progress. So uh, so that's that's what's happening with that. We, we could go to the Finance Committee uh, about that, but I don't think get us a result because I, this seems to be a town-wide situation where they're waiting for the results of the, um, compensation. the compensation study and um, the, final, the, the final negotiations for union contracts. So I think there really isn't much that we can do and I don't think that we would get any better of a reception than any other department that's in the same position. So I think right now we just sort of have to wait and bide our time. Um, I am going to look at it a little more closely for the current year because we do have s some unspent um, some unspent funding due to the turnover in staff. So there's a little bit of money right now that probably could be used to hire someone, even just to replace Audrey, who was only here on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and that would be helpful. Um, then you know, come next year, if the town doesn't make a move to address this, we would have to then look at Lake Mary funding or some other source to continue that Saturday part-time help. Is Audra staying on Saturday? As no, she's gone, she's and that's, gone. that's why we're kind of looking right. at, like, bare minimum to just stay where we were. We would need to replace that position. Um, and right now you still have two people on Saturdays? We do. Okay. We do. Uh, so, yeah, it's not, it's not an emergency, but, again, this is one of those things where we're trying to keep things... Um, moving in the right direction because this is the you know as with 
with the increase that we're seeing in volume of people coming through, it's really impossible for everyone to keep up with their work because it's just so much more. So having that third person is really mm -hmm. kind of key. Um, so that you know, the the kind of front desk staff are not getting swamped. Um, so that's where things stand with the budget. I think we'll just kind of have to um, roll with it and see see how it turns out with the other bigger moving pieces. Um, I did want to make a note just um, because it is interesting uh, that we did get the electronic counters up at the doors and um, I'm kind of considering February, I got them up like probably a week or 10 days ago um, and we're kind of using this as a sort of an experimental phase to just see how it works, get everybody used to like the, the routine of like collecting the numbers at the end of the day to make sure that we're actually capturing that um, and then probably we'll, we'll roll that into like, um, you know, the official, like I'll, I'll report that in my report for March going forward to, to say this is the, the tally for patrons that came in, this is our hand tally, this is the tally mm. that the people counter tells us and see, just sort of see what the trend is because again, just sort of anecdotally, it always seems like the busier we are, the more that we're dropping numbers because we're too busy to mm -hmm. count the people that are walking through the door. So this is going to show what the disparity is, um, hopefully somewhat truthfully. Um, and so far, interestingly, you know, today we did have as many as, t we had probably more than 200 people in the building, which is a lot. And that... Just today? Today, yeah. Um, and interestingly, so the, the counter shows two numbers. It shows an in number and an out number. Because the beams, you know, which you disrupted, it's, you know, it tells which way the people went. So one number is higher than the other. Um, but one of the numbers is only one off from the hand tally. Mm. which was interesting. So it's actually maybe not as far as, mm. as, uh, as I suspected, but, um, but that was interesting to me. Um, so we'll just kind of see how that trend continues. Um, roof update, we'll talk about that soon. Access hardware, I do not have anything frustratingly. Um, the native plantings project that you recall back in the fall, we had the presentation from uh, uh, Megan from Hamden, Hampshire Conservation District about um, planting it on the garden bed. They, they did send, um, the, the fellow that's doing the design, his name is Owen Wormser, he's the fellow that did the presentation here, was it last Saturday or the Saturday before? Um, as part of a series from HHCD that they're putting on here, they're doing like three, um, three talks. They've done a plant sale here previously in the fall. Um, anyway, they, he sent a proposal uh, a couple of months ago that didn't really line up with what we talked about verbally when he was here and we walked around the site. He, I think they were keen for visibility's sake to have it over here, but I said, well, we already have a garden over there. We don't really need to pull that up and redo it because um, it's fine as is. Um, but when, they, when he went back to the drawing board, rather than just putting it to the corner where we talked about, he went to the other alternate thing that we had talked about when he was here about the problematic nature of the, you know, the, that strip with the Pachysandra mm -hmm. that wants to go back to a wild meadow and, and needs to be weeded because it just grows, mm -hmm. you know, crazily in the summer. So we put a proposal together for that, which to my mind um, solves a problem because I, I mean, I was encouraging him to look at that when he was here because as one of the potential spots that is creating like a big, a big hassle as far as maintenance goes. And if that were replaced with a meadow type garden, it wouldn't need nearly the kind of maintenance. Would any of it be up front or just along? It would be the along the strip, but we could, I mean, I think, I think we could go back to him and say, well, you know, we like this idea, we don't like the idea. It's not exactly what we were expecting. Can we expand the scope of this um, and see what kind of traction we get? I, I'm just bringing this to you as, I was as surprised as anyone because it wasn't what I thought in either case, I didn't think the first time he was going to do that. And then when he came back to the second one, I didn't think he was going to do that either. Um, but from my point of view, and as you know, because you've been out there and you, you, know, you pulled stuff out, it's a real hassle in the summer and it grows wild. So it is something in the long term that we need to come up with a solution for. And to my mind, this kind of is such a solution. So I don't necessarily want to just go back to him and say, you know, <coughs> you did it wrong, do it again. 
Um, who, it, who would fund that particular meadow? So the way this works, as I understand it, and I'm trying to get final confirmation on is <clears throat> this, is that we provide volunteer help, sort of like we did when we did the original plantings around the building, um, and then they provide the plant stock. They provide the design and they provide the plants and we do the work to get it in. And then all of the maintenance, they put up some signage saying, this is you know, what this is, this is the purpose of it, this is, these are the types of plants that we've used. Um, and you know, as far as I understand the end. Um, yeah, because I was surprised that his proposal included a price, and, I, and then that got me thinking, yeah. like, wait, how, was this paid for, or was this... Yeah, no, so any, 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 yeah. the way it was described to me was that they pay for that, and so I've been, I keep asking yeah. them, like, clarifying, like, so you're paying for this, right? And he said, yeah, that's my understanding. I didn't hear that back from Megan, but obviously if we were to say, yes, we want to pursue this, it would be... Mm -hmm. That's the understanding. Yeah. That's what we're getting into here. And he may be forced to come up with some rough numbers, sure. just, um, you know, yeah. right. up to $500 or whatever yeah. the number yeah. value is. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of comments. First of all, it seems to me that my limited gardening understanding is that those plants most favored by pollinators tend to require a lot of sun. So it's that's the up. north side. It's very, but in the summer, it's very hot over there. I mean, things are But not, the temperature is not, it's, it's no, the it's, sun. No, I mean, it's direct sun. In the, in the heat of the summer, the, the sun is on that strip for a large portion of the day. We park back the, there, I know the this. The east, the sun coming this way, it'll catch, it'll catch the north a little bit. A not even a little bit, bit. even in, in the heat of the summer, it will be direct sunlight through most of the day. So this isn't like right up against the building there? Is this like right outside your or office? Yep. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, in the summer it is. It the morning sunlight. sun. Mm -hmm. And probably and the some afternoon. And some, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, exactly. It'll yeah. come west. Out. Yes. I would offer the comment once Pacassandra is actually established, <laughs> the only thing I have ever had to pull out of it is the occasional poison ivy because the birds were in the trees above, mm -hmm. or a maple sapling, startling, whatever, mm -hmm. that has grown through. Regular weeds rarely mm -hmm. come up through it. The pachysander that's there hasn't really been, I mean, it will make a carpet that has a root, solid root pack like this. And at some point, it won't be an issue, and I will volunteer to come and pull out weeds. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of kind of hate to see the Pacassandra go because, I mean, yeah, no, it is not native. I understand that, although the bees will visit it. But I would think the back corner would be more suited if he doesn't want to do something out front. I mean, the, that, that is a far more prominent corner than, than what he's proposing here. I mean, my, my as, I was, as I was saying, my thought would be to ask them to expand, either expand the scope or for us to look at, you know, ex them doing one project or the other. I mean, I understand what you're saying about the Pacassandra. I just know what, you know, how much trouble we're going through and how bad it looks through much of the summer, and, and maybe that, as you say, maybe that problem will go away. Um, oh, I, I just know it I, Okay, I have my doubts, but yeah, maybe. And I, we just have, we have that, main, we have that problem of, you know, it, all the maintenance of this kind of thing is volunteer, is done by volunteers, and it's, you know, it's a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I'm not, this is not like, this is not the hill that I want to die on, I just, you know, saw it as sort of like, well, maybe this is just like, you know, solves a problem that then we don't have to think about anymore because it just becomes, you know, a carpet of wildflowers and, and things that if the, the stuff from the adjoining fields comes over 
and takes root and that starts growing up too, it just doesn't look out of place because it's just more native stuff that would be growing there anyway. Um, well, is your suggestion, Lynn, partly to have one little meadow there and one little meadow there? Two areas? I'm just thinking that at that you've got the little walkway across the back that goes to the door there. Mm -hmm. To the left of that, there are a couple of pathetic hostas with grass around them, and the DPW folks have a hard time dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And then farther around to the back of the building mm -hmm. and then toward the children's garden, that's all essentially crabgrass. I don't know. It would at least get some more sun because a lot of it would be east and south exposure, it wouldn't get west. The corner that, if I understand... The one by the HVAC uh, stuff. Right. I don't know that that would really be appropriate for development because you do, you I know... get in there. The you know, contractors and, and, you know, the DPW staff need to go in and out of there, sometimes carrying big stuff. Um, I don't know okay. that you could really, like, do much back there without it getting in the way. I don't remember seeing a list of the plants, but I may I, just not have oh, gone well, far enough. It's, it, yeah, it was there. there. If you want to, that's oh, it. That, if those mean anything to you. I think the I think the, the bigger question here, I mean, you know, again, the Packer Center can wait. I mean, it's not something I'm looking forward to, to hassling with this summer, but if we do a better job of um, of organizing volunteers, which is something we need to do because it's not just that garden area, it's other garden beds that, that need to be addressed. And this one out here just, you know, it gets bad too and it's quite visible. So it is a larger problem um, that this doesn't solve entirely. And I can certainly go back to him and say, well, you know, this is still not exactly what we talked about. You know, it, it's, it's not, you know, and, and to, to their point, it's not as visible as what we asked them to do and they've twice failed to do. Um, so I don't have a problem going back to him and just saying, can you just do what we asked you to do? And then we'll put them together and make a decision. Or, um, but this is what I got, so I just wanted to share it with you and, and give you my thoughts on why it's, not a total non-starter hmm. from my point of view. Susan, do you have any thoughts? Susan, do you have any thoughts? I'm sorry. Do you have any thoughts on the garden proposal? Uh, well, I think it's worth getting it right. I mean, I think it's worth going back and asking and making sure that we're satisfied with it as well and not, I know it's, a, it's not a hill you want to die on, and I agree, it's not the biggest thing, but it still is a visible part, and, and if we're going to be maintaining it, then it's worth the extra effort to me, and maybe one of us should go with Patrick and kind of, so it's not completely his job, but to hear both sides of the situation as it is now and then kind of maybe be more of the point person to move it along um, and take it off of Patrick's plate. Um, but I think it's worth getting it right. I think it's worth going back again. I mean, I think the site has, is not the best suited for this. But shouldn't he know that? I mean, they do this as a living, right? So I would assume that they would be able to look at that site and, and analyze the lighting and the soil and what's growing in there currently and say, this would work, that would not, no, that wouldn't work. 
Who would do the installation, Patrick? Volunteers. Or okay. volunteers or whoever we, you know, if we wanted to pay someone to do that, we could do that. But, right. but, but Abound is not doing it. No. Okay. No. No, that's our, that's our part to figure out. But would they give us, would we, would we be going in with like, here's a plan for how it should be arranged? Or we would yeah, just get I the plants and kind of figure it out? Like, I, I believe there would be a plan and I believe that, um, that the fellow that did the design mm -hmm. might be there to advise. I'm okay. not, I would have to confirm that, mm -hmm. um, but that was sort of my understanding. And if not, you know, he's available to consult, even if he's not here yeah. on the day. Um, but we, you know, I feel like this is ground that we've covered before. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> so, Some of us were there though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. So yeah. I feel like it's totally well within our um, ability to do it, particularly in that front area where it's just lawn and it's, um, we kind of know what the soil is like. It's, it's not fun. It could it's use rough. amendment. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it can be done and, and it's not, you know, there's not a ton of stuff there. The DPW signed off on that location um, already and said, just don't put anything with deep roots. Mm. And that's what we asked for. We can confirm that, you know, that he goes down that list and says that there's nothing here that's going to grow above a certain height or deeper than you know, whatever, 12 inches or something like that. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, if that's, if that's the direction we want to go and I'll happily just go back and say, you know, I can, and I can ask him to just come back and, you know, can you come back and we can talk about this in person. And if anybody else wants to be there to take part in that conversation, we can arrange that. What is your hope on timeline? When do you want to see this going in? Is this something that could happen the spring or no way I would think it could happen in the spring I mean I, okay. I think there's no reason that it couldn't because it's not that I don't think it's that huge of a project and it's really okay. I mean we couldn't get the plants you know we could only get the plants in the spring so I don't think that it would take they should be readily available mm -hmm. so if that's if that's whatever well, that's the consensus I'll, I'll, I'll go back and, and report back at the next meeting about it Okay, Susan, if you have any further comments or more interest, be in touch with Patrick. Yeah, if that's something you'd like to be involved in, then yeah, just let me know and we'll, I'll keep you in the loop on it. Uh, what do I have? The other, yeah, I was going to be taking items to Boston Public Library last week, but mm -hmm. that didn't happen because I was sick all week. And that was so we'll the digitization project? Yes. Okay. So I'd um, love to get that out the door and uh, be able to feel like we've truly begun with that. Um, so we'll, we'll, I'll be trying to get in the next couple of weeks to, to figure out in the time. And I think that's it. Come, and we'll come back to the roof whenever. Well, let's just sort of segue to the roof okay. right now. Um, I share the most recent proposal with all of you. And there has been some more thought. And given the difficulty in having an entire board conversation about the proposals, I have asked Patrick and Jack and Joanne to be a subcommittee. And they have all agreed. So they will look at the proposals. They will get input on some of them from Mark Sullivan and anybody else who has an informed point of view to offer with the hope of then coming to the board with a recommendation to hire one of the firms. Um, I will just allow that there is a possibility that we might have it might be advisable to have a very brief meeting in order to continue to move this project forward before our next scheduled meeting, depending how things go. Um, but if that were the case, I think we could probably do it just very quickly on Zoom if it's just a single item agenda. So that is... And some of the some of the proposals do have expiration dates on them. I don't yeah. know that they would really say no, that's not valid. But we should be aware of it um, and you know try to 
make progress before we have to then ask for something else that they say, you know, that's, not, that's no longer current. Um, and I did want to mention, I don't remember, I know I forwarded it to you, but I don't know if I forwarded it to everybody. The conversation I had with Mark Sullivan, I don't think I did, probably. Uh, but after the last meeting, the, the general consensus on that was to go back to Mark and ask if he would be cooperative um, and, and help us with some of this, and also to ask for his advice on firms that we might contact, and also if he was familiar with any of the firms that we had already gotten um, quotes from. He was very um, he was very helpful. He said that um, he gave us a recommendation for another firm. He said that he had some either direct experience or at least firsthand knowledge of one of the other ones that we had already received um, a quote from, um, and he you know he had some some thoughts on the roof and and you know didn't say that we were going off the trail with uh, with our approach. So that felt like a um, that felt helpful, and he's you know he was helpful. His disposition was helpful, so I didn't feel like ah you know he's we're we're bugging him by going back and, and asking him to do this. He was kind of saying yeah I'm still your guy, so that's great. Um, and yes, and we did receive a fourth uh, fourth proposal from one of the firms that he uh, recommended. It is considerably higher than <laughs> than like, the other, We thought so. the range was wide before, and then this one like doubles the high end. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like what? About SGA. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, but so that, thanks for creating the subcommittee <laughs> to figure yeah. this out. <laughs> yes, um, and I did feel like you know this is one of those things where we you know there's a lot to kind of unpack in the conversation about this about like who we're hiring, what we hope to accomplish, um, and I, I think that that could be um, a, a kind of a, a pretty long conversation in and of itself. So that seemed like something that we should maybe build a consensus within a subcommittee, then come back and say. Look, this is what we strongly feel, and go from there. And sort of kind of related to that then is how the roof and our solar might fit into the larger scheme of what kinds of ideas have begun to float around town in terms of a larger project to meet town building solar needs and what role, if any, an array on top of our building might play when it seems as though the town would be looking at the old the landfill, the landfill transfer site, mm -hmm. the transfer station yeah. site or the roof of the elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, so we have learned that it's all very complex. And nothing moves fast with solar in the first place, whether it's a municipal project or a private project. Uh, the problem with the the dump, the transfer station, is you need three-phase power, certain type of wiring to get there, or batteries, or um, some other option. Um, it, you know, it's possible with the school. I guess I'm wondering too what's going on with our town manager. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it, it's very complex. I guess it sounded to me as though there is a plan that we might do something sometime and the sometime is altogether without definition. Right. Or un unannounced, <laughs> right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that the thing to figure out, I think, is going to be what state our roof is in, what, if anything, we need to do to it if we were to install a solar array for ourselves, since we do have the funds, but is there a reason to postpone that further in order to participate in the town's larger effort so that we don't 
have the panels on our roof, which may or may not dictate what kind of roofing material or what steps we take yeah. following the engineering analysis. It may really behoove us to table any kind of solar going on this so building. My question is, is the condition of the roof currently a problem? Is there leakage in the building? No, nothing that's nothing that has been observed or confirmed by anyone that's looked at it. There's there hasn't been anything that we can point to at this point that is of such a concern that we would need to take immediate action. And that's kind of like one of the ironies here is that if we do nothing, the roof may just be fine for 20, 25 years. It may just be like, well, they're kind of crappy shingles and, and maybe the lifespan isn't what we'd like them to be, but is the, is the roof really failing? Maybe not. Um, but I, I also, I, I wanted to kind of go back to what you, what you, you were saying, Jack, about the, or, and actually you, Lynn, as well, about like being part of the conversation around solar. I think it really sh shouldn't be forgotten that, you know, it's quite possible that by having a motivated party, you know, the library, just like I think the, solar, the senior center is also uh, motivated, mm -hmm. and they've been trying to do this for a while too, that we really could sway the conversation, we could push it in a direction. Mm -hmm. I think we can't forget that, I mean, that's how we got to this point, like got into this building by doing that. Um, and it just was a concerted drumbeat talking to people over and over again until people started to face the right way. Um, so I, I don't want to underestimate our ability to influence the situation. We, I don't think we, we need to be utterly passive uh, mm -hmm. in light of this. So I think we have a role to play um, by being one of the first you know, new buildings built in years and you know, the solar was part of the plan, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and we're stuck in the water through no fault of our own, um, just really through circumstance, financial cir circumstances of the, you know, the pre-pandemic and the, you know, the pandemic itself. So I think we should keep that in mind. Yeah, and to your point, and Susan, also to your point, you know, it would really make sense if Hadley could install solar in a larger array, we're talking mm -hmm. multiple acres, on the old transfer station location rather than having lots of little arrays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it does create an option on the roof where you know you need a little less structure if you don't have solar on this building. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I don't know where the town will take this because um, we through the climate change committee have been investigating this for years mm -hmm. and it hasn't moved forward. I will say um, Last year, my wife and I replaced our system on our house, mm -hmm. and the new system is generating three times oh, what wow. we used to get in the same surface same area. Footprint. So, you know, in some ways, it's not the worst yeah. if you're waiting because the technology constantly improves. Mm -hmm. And I think the conversation, I think the two things combined, I think the conversation, people hearing more and more of it and breaking down their conservatism around the issue, as well as the technology and the dollars and cents aspect of that is going to create a critical mass that eventually people will be like, yeah, it's a no-brainer, just do mm -hmm. it. Well, and it also makes me wonder, is there a way you could have a raise on the front, not necessarily roof-mounted? You know, could you do some sort of um, land-based system over here? Mm -hmm. I know there's just a small footprint to this particular property, but it's an option. The front, you mean in the front? I don't know, for, his, for in the, we're in the historic district, so I don't know that we would be able to do that, but I mean, I would say, yeah. I would say, why are we not doing something? I mean, now we're getting like into the weeds here, but and just far-fetched ideas. But why are we not doing something like they have at UMass, where it's just like something covering, covering the parking lot? Because those are terribly expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one concern. Yeah. When you're doing a parking lot mounted system, it's one third more of the cost. And I am no solar expert, but it is significantly more to have that, that. Um, structure underneath it and put it up top. But boy, you have the perfect location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's facing south. Yeah. Well, the problem is we didn't buy that solar array across the street when it was for sale. <laughs> it was overpriced, but anyways, <laughs> yes. Doesn't sound like it might have been. Anyway, okay. Um, that is, I just wanted to sort of have a general conversation just so everyone has a little bit better understanding of where the town is and where 
we are. Um, unfortunately, we do not have information from Joanne, so I will ask her to please send something to all of us with respect to the planning session mm -hmm. that she has scheduled later this month. It's next week, right? Yes, so it's still this the week. 28th. It's someplace in the I forget. I think it's the 28th. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, and I don't think I have anything else. Anybody else want to volunteer? In that case, I would be happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. I make such a motion. And I second that. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> Yay! Yeah.